to the K to the K to the K. Hello, one and all. Welcome to the A to the K Wrestling Show. Where today we're doing some more wild predictions, Anthony. More wild predictions for you. Well, this is an interesting one, Carl. It is because you've made a card for us. I have. Here you go. So to Anthony from me. So this isn't a, a joint wild predictions. This is a impress me, bitch. It is. It is. Um, so I'm going to be under some scrutiny because before WrestleMania 39 even happened, that's right. You're going to have seen WrestleMania where, by the time this comes out because we're going to hold this episode back, aren't we? Because Got vacations. Hell yeah. So I think we're holding this one back. Maybe. Did you can see beforehand. Or... Maybe we didn't. Um, but yes, this is before WrestleMania 39 has even aired. Um, I've taken on the monumental task of saying, well, what could next year's WrestleMania be like? What could happen next? So I've uh, tried to predict the future. Uh, and we've got, I think it's around 14 matches across two nights for Are WrestleMania. Are you keeping to a two-night mania? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We've got to, got to stick by the rules now. So... We'll kick things off with night one. Oh. And match one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so I think we might see Riddle versus Logan Paul, right? The reason I think this, Logan Paul has signed a deal with WWE. So he is going to be there. He's going to be featured in all the big matches, whether we like it or not, on all the big events. Riddle, he's not on TV at the minute. He's been off the card. I think he's going to come back and provided he doesn't have any more wellness violations, we'll potentially get the... Uh, you know, all eyes on me spot next year. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is a very interesting um, <laughs> choice. <laughs> I thought I'd just blow your fucking mind with the first I, one. No, I, I honestly, like, it could go either way, this. Mm-hmm. I, I, take, I take your point, and Riddle could be a very big commodity. I honestly, at this point, I'm getting to a point that I think maybe Riddle's going to disappear into obscurity a little bit. Well, wow, okay. I'm not sure he's going to behave himself enough. And as much as they're protecting him, going three strikes didn't mean out. Mm. You know, with, with, uh, that's a silly rule. <laughs> you know, as much as that's what they've done with him, I honestly, I don't, I don't think we're going to have Riddle um, okay. back, especially in this sort of capacity by then. Um, okay. So, so uh, it's a surprising one for me. Okay. Uh, will it be a fun match? I actually, yeah, I think so. I think they, we've seen Riddle is capable of um, a bit of what's the word seriousness, mm-hmm. and I think the fact that the fact that they're both notoriously silly and mm-hmm. and what have you, um, I think the turn on this story, if they told it, would be the fact that you know it gets personal. Yeah, um, I feel like Riddle's got uh, Riddle's got that UFC background. Logan, Logan Paul wants to be a, a boxer, fighter, right? And I could really see this getting a bit. Um, getting a bit serious could he even be in the fight pit in all fairness well exactly and like I would love to see it take that more serious like it starts out goofy and then I'm gonna laugh and then it kind of gets a bit like no similar to the Seth thing like I'm not gonna kick your fucking head in kind of thing like I I would love to see them to get like uh, like try and get away from the goofiness with each other Mm -hmm. and and just go for it I think that'd be awesome okay okay and by go for it I mean wrestle it sounds a little bit sexual (laughs) I love it Um, okay so yeah that's what what I would do Um, so if Riddle didn't make the cut Anyone come to mind who you'd do Logan Paul against? Or? Uh, if it's WWE, let's be honest, if Logan Paul's still here at this point, they're probably going to make a fight bad buddy. Yeah. Or a okay. good buddy. I don't know. <laughs> Some kind of buddy. Um, okay, so that's match one for night one. Coming in, night two, Kevin... Oh, sorry, night one still. Match two of night one. <laughs> Kevin Owens takes on Sami Zayn, Anthony. You might be thinking, but what? Right, these two are destined to fight forever and fight... They're not in the same way of like... Like Tommaso and Johnny Gargano, and we're just sick of it. Oh no, I don't think we'll be sick of it. But I feel like Sammy's proven, um, you know, he can carry a, an amazing story. The fans can get massively behind him. Kevin Owens has proven that he can be an absolute dick, and he's a fantastic heel, and he turns on everyone. Think of the Festival of Friendship with Chris Jericho, right? Yeah, beautifully done. Sammy is going to remain a baby face all year. They're going to win the tag titles, I think, this year's WrestleMania. Okay. Um, they're going to have a great run together and all that good is stuff. Is this going to be for a title? Um, nope, just okay. literally a good match. Just a fight. Yeah, again, in the fight, but all in the fight, but... Um... <laughs> it's a fight pit mania! <laughs> but, yeah, I feel like these two are just synonymous with each other. They've got a fantastic history. They're best friends. And I think, why not, you know, have the opportunity to fight each other on the biggest stage? Um in an absolute grudge match. I like this Give one. it hell. Yeah. So, I uh, approve. We, we get this for next year. You have to let me know the stipulations <clears throat> involved. Like, 
Um, oh, it's going to be no holds barred. Or yeah. Whatever, you know? Well, I've not really thought that far ahead, but we can oh, discuss okay, it. Okay, okay, um, okay, okay, so, okay. the next uh, yes, one. Yes, yes. The match times, we should have yes. got this year instead of fucking Omos, I think. Brock Lesnar. Yeah, because who needs to like put a good match on? Well, exactly. I think... You know, Walter's going to have a fantastic year. I think he's going to lose the IC title. I think he's going to move into the main event scene. He's getting pushed And be that, yeah. unsuccessful. Um, oh, but okay. I think he'll be around the main event scene enough that he can quite believably enter a program with Brock. Get the attention at of Mania. Brock! Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and Brock is going to be at the twilight of his career. Maybe his last ever Mania. And who do you put over? Will he retire Brock as well? I think so. I think he's not got... Long left in the business, I don't think. Jesus Christ, you act like he's coming out with a cane or something. No, no, I just think it's, it's just not for him. No disrespect, forever. MVP. I don't think. <laughs> Do you know what? I, didn't, I, I thought that was just like a gimmick thing. He actually really fucked up his knee mm. in a match. I just I didn't even remember. But yeah. um, I mean, it kind of, style-wise, it kind of suits, doesn't it? So it doesn't seem odd yeah. to have it there well, aesthetically, exactly. but... Yeah, well, yeah, the more you know. So yeah, <laughs> I, th- <laughs> I think we are going to get Walter take it on Brock Lesnar. It's the match we should have got this year, and I think it's going to be Brock putting over Walter, similar to how you know take a put over Brock. I think this is going to set Walter up to be like, oh fucking hell, this guy beat Brock Lesnar, okay. and takes him to the next level into that main event. Uh, well, into the world take title. Take it to scene. the limit. Mm-hmm. Think. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Absolute banger that will be. Um. Again for night one. What? Right. Kenny Omega's comments that this past week. is wild. Kenny Omega's comments this past week. He's very open to new challenges. Um, he's not. He's been a bit coy around whether he's going to re-sign with AEW. What if he doesn't? What if he goes over there? What if you the know, this, go this over would there? be the, the doom of AEW if they've took them three as well. Potentially. Potentially. But... Unless this this company's owned by Khan at this point. Just becomes all wrestling. <laughs> the, elite, the elite are gone. Um, but yeah, it's it's entirely possible. I don't think MJF's going to come over. If that makes a difference, I know that's the bidding war of twenty twenty four. I don't think MJF is seriously going to go over. Um, uh, but I, I could see. I, I think regardless, <clears throat> I think this will fuck AEW up if these three leave as well. Maybe, but Kenny has always wanted to work WWE. Cody's over there now, but he's not the WWE style man. I mean, he ne- won't be happy there. Neither Shinsuke, neither you know. AJ really I know they can work that style they won't be happy there but he's he's another one unfortunately a lot of people are coming up to the twilight of their careers it's just they've been around so long what the fuck's with you in twilight man I just, I just love twilight okay <laughs> um, but yeah I think Kenny's going to go over and I think shortly after the books are going to follow as well and I think what could be fantastic Bullet Club you know fans rejoice is having the OC versus the Elite no trios titles on out like that <sighs> I just couldn't find a picture of the three of them, and I couldn't be asked. I mean, this one kind of hurts, but <clears throat> honestly, if you had AJ and Twit and Twat in the <laughs> ring, and AJ's cutting a promo because the other two can't really talk, mm-hmm. and then you hear the um, Super Kick Party yeah. kick off, because yeah. I don't want Omega's music, I want their music oh, to yeah. kick. I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd mark out for that bit, to be oh, honest. Yeah. Right? So again, we don't know what's going to happen. This is the one I think has probably got the least chance of happening, but if it did... I think it'd be fucking pretty cool, to be fair. Yeah, I, as I say, I think that uh, it would do some damage to AEW, <laughs> but there's no denying this that it'd be a fucking massive pop and it'd be a hell of a match. Because mm-hmm. as much as I, I've made some fairly unfair comments about uh, the the two fellas who were stood behind AJ Styles, um, the the notorious friends of popular people, mm-hmm. uh, they can wrestle and they can put on good matches. Well, exactly. Um, so I don't know. I feel like I just don't know what it is. It's not. And I don't, obviously, I, I still love AEW, don't get me wrong, but it's not AEW of old anymore. It's Tony Khan's company now. These these four started that company with the vision that they were going to run it. And when Tony was like, nah, I'm I'm, I'm taking over now. And it just feels like, well, if we're going to work for a tyrant, we might as well work for the tyrant. Well, exactly. Um, so, yeah. Very bold prediction, but we're going to see trios match. Would you want Wayward Son, though? Would you want the three of them to come out like that? If they could get with it, that yeah, entrance, because, you know... You know, I'll take what I can get. Now, this next one for the uh, Royal Women's Championship, which will be held by Bailey. Nice. It's going to be a fine fa- choice. A fatal choice. four-way. Um, and it's basically... Even you can't resist putting Charlotte in things. <clears throat> right? It's going to be a fatal four-way, and it's essentially what would have been the four-horse women match, but Sasha ain't there anymore. You d- so even in your wildest predictions, you can't bring her back? 
Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, uh, you know, I want to be clear. I don't. This isn't like a fantasy booking. Like you're not just going to see random shit. I know that, that, so that you, last one was truly, pretty random, right? You truly don't think we could see her back by the next WrestleMania? No? I don't think she'll be back then. Interesting. Okay. I think she's she's on a um. What? What the Cody Cody kept calling is it, is it, yeah she's on an excursion. excursion. So I think she it's will got to find herself. She'll do Japan for at least a year, um, and she might do a couple of other places along the way. Yeah. And she's gonna come back with badass music, an elevator, and blonde Maybe. hair. She might just leave. She might just go into movies and stuff full time. But yeah. Um. So for me, this is the four horse four horsewomen match that we never got. And who's better to take the mantle of Sasha Banks than Rhea Ripley? Who I think I don't know whether she'll still be in the Judgment Day at that point. Whether that'll be disbanded and moved I think on. By that point, she because she is the Judgment Day. I feel like yeah. you know she needs to go past them at some point. Yeah. So I think um, you know she won't stray too far from what she is. Uh, you know, will probably still be a heel maybe at that point, or she might be a babyface. Actually, Charlotte will be the heel. So maybe Becky and Rhea as the heels. Um, yes. No, Becky and Rhea is the faces, sorry. And Charlotte. And, and fuck it, put them on a ladder. Yeah, who? Yeah, whatever. But we need a women's title match. I think we're going to get some but kind of combination like this. I like it when they've proved like, oh, the Hell in a Cell stuff and they prove the grit. Uh, give them a fucking ladder match. Yeah, why not? Do you know? A ladder match. Why the ladder hell not? Um, so what do you think? Fit or way? I actually really like it. Right, this is the only other crazy bit of fancy booking, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sasha couldn't possibly come back. <laughs> well, his the Switchblade Jay White and the Elite. Well, in this pay per view, yeah. right? So Jay White's out of contract. He's not showing up in AEW anytime soon, by the looks of it. He's not going to go to you know back to Impact. I can't. I don't think so. If Triple H wants him, he'd go there. You don't know that. And if he knows that you know Kenny's going to go there, and he knows that the Bucks are going to go there, I could definitely see him go there. So. He could be a part of this kind of, you know, whatever they call it, little factions. You've got like Bullet Club versus Bullet Club. You've got AJ's faction. You've got um, Kenny Omega's faction. And then the, he just happens to not be in that trio's match, but he's kind of gone into this for the IC title, which... I mean, on. that's an interesting choice because I would feel like he'd he consider himself world champion material and you're bringing him in in the mid-card. He's not world champion material in WWE. But ever he thinks that though ever he, ever ever you you never put him in the main event never not in the degree wow okay no chance fair but you put Kenny um, he could get there I think and, and even straight away I don't think he's going to be brought in and be a world champion he might compete against Cody or something maybe I don't know mm. but I don't think he'd be a world champ interesting the problem, the, the problem is the WWE roster is so fucking huge. Like Seth Rollins should be the main event, and even I mean, in this, to be fair, yeah, there's no the disrespect to you know I mean? Seth at that level. Um, yeah, so it's, it's one fair. of them. I feel like it's such a shame for Seth because I'd love nothing more than to put him in the main event, but I just can't see it happening still by next year. Um, you say the roster's just so deep. Well, I can see it happening, but I don't want to see Cody versus Seth again. True. Right. So um, yeah, triple threat, and obviously Finn Balor's supposedly meant to be getting somewhat of a push again. I don't think he's going to be a world champion. So, I mean, we tried that once. Exactly. So, yeah, for me, it's going to be, you know, a kind of battle of different eras, a battle of different styles, indie darlings, Japan, you know, Japan, um, kind of all facing off for the IC title in a triple threat. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're not underwhelmed, you're not overwhelmed, you're just whelmed. Uh, I mean, this is probably one of my least favourite of the options. Okay, and okay. That's... See, the thing about WrestleMania is you've got to have something for everybody. Yeah, Seth, so Seth a is an bit. absolute ledge, but I just, I, I don't think I'd be particularly engrossed in this match. As much as, logically, I totally get why you've booked it this way. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. Which takes us to the main event of night one. And you, are we, is this right? Is this how you've done the image? Drew is already champion at this point? Drew is champ. Okay, so, explain to me how we got here. So Cody Rhodes will dethrone Roman Reigns okay. at WrestleMania. Okay. Will be the new champ. He will have maybe one successful defense, maybe two at most, and he's going to lose the belt. And then it becomes Cody's redemption arc of... Yeah. I did Cody everything. breaks down and like, I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> well, you know, he did everything to get there, but once he got there, he found out that staying on top is even harder than reaching the top. And then it becomes because we've said Cody's, you know, ascent to this main event has been pretty fucking easy, really. He's, <laughs> he's shitting on Dusty. Oh, we get the same promo again. It's like, 
oh yeah, you know, being on top is the harder part, and I didn't realize. <laughs> well, it's not about the five thousand yeah, dollars well, suits or the Rolex <laughs> or the Bentley or. The, oh, for God's sake! Listen, listen. <laughs> right, he does say all that, and it is a bit bad, but I still love Cody. But that, like, we've we've been saying, where'd you go with Cody Rhodes? Right, he won't want to turn heel. He doesn't want to turn heel. Um, where'd you go with Cody AW? Rhodes? Sounds like a reality show, right? I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd watch her. But yeah, I, once he once he gets the belt and he's done what he set out to do, there's nowhere for him to go from there. So the only logical thing to do is to have him struggle and actually face some real adversity. Because he did it, he got the belt, they throw him Roman, no one's ever been able to beat him, and then he has a shock loss. Yeah. And it's like, shit, I, you know, I couldn't actually keep it. And then he starts to doubt himself, like Roman was a real champion, he held it for years, I couldn't hold it for more than a couple of, yeah. you know, and all that kind of stuff. I think it'd be wise to make that into a story because anyone who has the title after Roman is going to have to compare to that thousand plus day run so, yeah well, exactly. potentially exactly and i think cody can can handle that quite well because he will he certainly won't have done himself any damage by beating roman so if he loses he's still the guy that beat roman yeah so it's not and like as you say then it's him uh it's the hubris isn't it of going well you know what it's my fault i should have been yeah. more prepared to defend the title and yeah. i was so worried about getting it yeah that i never considered that so yeah i, I think yeah. that works i just, I just think that that's the perfect fit for cody for the next year because I mean, that's like 700 promos. Well, exactly, exactly. Um, And Drew, we've been saying it for ages. I I just, I think he deserves to defend the title at Mania in front of fucking fans, right? He's the COVID champ. He did a great job. The fans turned on him far too soon. And you know what? He needs to go go heel. Go heel. So Cody's still going to be baby face. Just heel Drew? Heel Drew. um, Heel monster Drew. Um, Love it. And once again, Cody will... All for it. ...dethrone um, and get the belt again for a second Mania run. All for it, man. Okay, so that's night one. Solid booking. Night two. They just needed a match. (laughs) I kind of understand now how Bray got paired up with Bobby. is because he's there and he feels big enough not to be, like, to miss it. But, like, what do you do? I disagree. Mm. I don't think Bobby is big enough. Mm. I don't. I don't think. All due respect to him, as I feel like he's the thing that they want to happen mm. to make happen, but it, they haven't made it happen. They yeah. want him to be a big deal. I don't think he ever has in WWE. Yeah, I know he was a big deal in Impact. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's ever been. I just was it Impact. <laughs> well, too, um, yeah. but I don't think he's ever been a big deal in WWE as much as they're trying to tell us he is, mm-hmm. and. Um, this is the same problem. This is going to be... I imagine the story for this is Bobby's going, I'll fight whoever, whenever. Yeah. And Seamus is like, well, I'm whoever. Yeah. Well, basically, the, the story is Seamus likes to fight. So, you know, he's basically turned into Finley because he's Irish. Um, and Irish people love to fight. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's a classic big, big meaty men slap a meat. Um, yeah. And that's what I think we'll get. Something like that. Because, you, you know... I love how we, you, you basically criticised WWE earlier for not having much story. Yeah. And in your own booking... But again... Didn't give it any right, story. No, again, I want to I wanna really make this clear. This isn't my fantasy. <laughs> this, is, this is my no, perfect mess well, you, you give us this card... And even you've gone. But I'm a realist. There's probably no story for I'm Bobby. Not, I'm not really booking it. I'm thinking, how, how are we, we going to book this next year? And they've year? just gone, fuck it, put yeah, him in a match. Of course. That's exactly what they would do. <laughs> right? And that's how we got here. So, again, oh, yeah, this isn't my perfect card. This is you just can't, You I can't say that every time I don't like something. No, no, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> this isn't my card. <laughs> Speaking of things you aren't like, my talents. Again, right? The two guys, if Carrion hasn't been released by then. He'll be involved in something. If Bray hasn't been released by then, he'll be involved in something. Let's I get the two the, spooky the, guys together. I mean, it kind of makes itself happen, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I think these could work really well together, to be honest. Yeah. Especially with them saying about, like, we're going to give uh, Carrion uh, one more push and one last chance and mm-hmm. in be a big deal in WWE. I think it's this kind of thing that could elevate them. Yeah. They, they would tell stories together really, really well. I feel and, like, know, as well, Scarlet. this is a... Well, it's not like you get to see more Scarlet, but... This, some people will hate me for saying this, but this is almost like a battle of the almosts. No, I, I get that. And I totally I, get that's that. That's a lot harsher on Bray than it is on uh, Carrion, because Carrion really has just been the almost every single time, whereas Bray's been champ and stuff. But, Do you know what's weird? I, and I know they're the same person. I'm not, I'm not losing my mind. The Fiend's been a champ. Well, yeah. Bray as Bray has kind of been an almost... Did, I know, I know. Did he win it as Bray Wyatt though? I know he kind of did, but it wasn't it like it was kind of with the assistance of Matt, wasn't it? It was around that time he was champ. Yeah, maybe. And it went really like it didn't feel as impactful as like you. Do, you really give his 
Swampy Bray's mm. run as champ. Swampy like, Bray. Like, I don't know, for me, I, I, I kind of get the almost statements when you look at Bray as Bray mm. rather than Bray as The Fiend. The Fiend was white hot. Yeah. But Bray, character-wise, as Bray, I, I kind of, I do kind of pitch them at the same point. Yeah. Fair. Okay. So I get you. Um, but yeah, I feel like cinematic-wise, like the whole, they've both got something going on, haven't they? And I think they I mean, can yeah, tell Bray, it compelling. Bray's got like, uh, you know, he's really good storytelling. He's really good at putting his character across. And Carrion has an hourglass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe if the if we are ever going to get this weird wired six thing that people have been talking about for ages, maybe this is how we recruit some new members or something. Maybe who knows? Would you would you have Harry <clears> in the <throat> wired six? Would you? Maybe it depends what it is. I don't think anyone really knows so how Western. it's going to go. You know? Ah. Then yes, actually, I would. Um, so yeah, that's the second match for night two. Love it. Um, I'll be, I'll be straight out the gates, the pairing. I love it. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Um. This shouldn't be theory holding the Intercontinental title though. Um, I forgot to change the render. I did. I changed these matches a few times, but I think Orton, if he can come back, um, you know, I think what a perfect foil for an Austin Theory character. You know, Theory's had a match with Pat McAfee and was involved with Austin and Stone Cold and all that. He's having a match this year um, with John Cena. You know, Randy Orton's another one just to elevate him again. It's just like, okay, we talked about Theory being the Mr. WrestleMania, didn't we, last week? So how do you do that? You book him in mar- marquee matches with, you know, legends. Marky. Marky, you know, for the marks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, it won't be for any kind of title. and um, This should just be Theory versus um, Randy, but they'll build up a bit of a feud similar to what has happened. Um, like, you know, maybe Theory starts saying he's the new legend killer. Yeah, after Cena, he could even start that gimmick. There be. you go. Mm. Um, and then obviously, Orton's like, he's gonna there's win. only ever been one um, legend killer. <laughs> to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. These two, I just think, would be fucking money. I'd love to see these two work together. They'd yeah, I, awesome. I thought straight away, without any story at all, these two in a match. Yeah. Yeah. It's all for that. I just think as well, like, yeah, it, the whole thing would be fantastic. So a way to elevate theory, because I don't think he's been in the main event scene anytime soon. He's still a bit, you know, yeah. way off. And I think, I, I think it would be too soon right now. Yeah, um, he's still very young, isn't he? So I think if you can start having matches I mean, like comparatively this... Comparatively to everyone else in the roster, he's like in the mid-40s. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, this is true. Um, so yeah, another match I would love to see. Um, then we've got the United States Championship. And again, it's... Well, we've got a lot of people on the card. What do we do with them, right? So we've got LA Knight. Yeah. We've got Montez Ford on his own. Street Profits will break up this year. We've got Bron Breaker being called up from NXT. <sighs> we've got uh, Gable. I mean, and I like that. We've got Solo. Going solo. Um, and we've got Damien Priest, who is the United States champ. I love that you put the belt on Damien. I think at some point uh, in the next year, he'd, he'd, like, he yeah. definitely should be. Yeah, I think so. He's um, um, It's the perfect kind of... I know he's kind of had it briefly, hasn't he? But Yeah, I, th- I think it's the perfect tier for where he's at right now. Do you know what I mean? Like You can't have everybody main event all the time. Mm. So... You know, people have to kind of understand and find their place. And I think if you bring the likes of a Bron Breaker over, he shouldn't be going in the main event scene. You know, you've got LA Knights, people fucking love him for whatever reason. He's not a main event star. I've yet to see the reason. Yeah. Um, Solo, you know, yeah, he's the, the enforcer and he's like a badass. And he wins a lot of matches. The ladies love Solo. He's still, well, he fucking do. Um, but again, he's not exactly done a whole hell of a lot. He's still relatively, I don't want to call him green, but he's still relatively new to the main roster. No, I give so. that. They've, they've, they have done a really good job of booking him as like, this dangerous sort of enforcer for the bloodline. Yeah. But like you say, he hasn't done a lot on yeah. the main roster really yet. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for any of these to beat Priest and become, have a bit of a breakout moment, whether it's Montez, whether it's Bron, um, even Gable. I think Gable would be fantastic as a US champ. I agree. I, I, the one I disagree with is Bron. I, I honestly don't think he's got it. No. I, I mean, I, I couldn't see him. I couldn't see the US title doing well on him at all. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I mean, he's struggling to. I don't even know if he's still got it, but he struggled with the NXT Championship. He's the top guy in NXT, and he doesn't feel like a top guy. That says a lot to me. Yeah. Um. Again, you know, I say it every time you say something that you disagree with, but it's not my massive personal preference. But I think I know you didn't book it. But I think well, I did. did. I did book it, but I booked it with the WWE lens, right? <laughs> I do think they're going to bring him up. <laughs> Grew a little tash and was like. It's good shit, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I think we'll see something like this. Maybe this is a, like a ladder match or some kind of you know. Um, gimmicky type thing to get everybody involved. Let's go with the tables. <clears throat> yeah, you know. Um, the match that never happened, right? The, oh, I want the, it. The end, the perfect bookend to the both of their careers. 
And we've spoke to Kurt Angle. Yes, and have. he's confirmed this is what he wanted. It's what he wanted. It's what he should have got. And it's no offence to Baron Corbin, who you'll notice is not on here. I'm sorry, I know you're a big Corbin fan. Um, Corbin is just totally mistreated. Mm-hmm. I could do one of the, you know, them. You see them sad adverts. Which ones? The sad, when you, they try and advertise for like a charity and they do mm. like the sad music and oh, everything's yeah. black and white. Mm. I feel like I could make one of them about, about Corbin. Yeah. Because he, he's, he just <clears> so gets shame. mistreated by WWE. Do you know what? Me. I'd love to see him go back down to NXT. Well, dominate. Yeah. I just don't think there's the space for him at the moment. Honestly, if you sent him back down to NXT for now, right, and he just battered Bron everywhere, mm-hmm. as bad as that sounds, it helped Bron because it gave him a real rivalry. Yeah. Baron's come back like well, the the big schoolyard bully who you mm-hmm. know I used to go here kind of thing, mm-hmm. and Bron would have to prove himself. Yeah. I think that would work perfectly for well, like, both of them. Look what happened with uh, with Mandy. She went back after failing, you know, on the main roster. And look what happened. She was like she one of the best things. Events, yeah. Well, yeah. But she was one of the best things on that show. And she really honed her craft and could have easily been brought up to the main roster. She did hone her craft. So, you're a terrible person. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we need marquee matches at WrestleMania. This would be the perfect bookend for both of them. Kurt's I, not I happy with his retirement. That we finally got this match. You know, yeah. that's how Cena got brought in. So, it'd be great for the pair of them to go out. Because, again, Cena, he's uh, alluded to it. Could we, could we have some, like some build to this and have like them referencing some of the classic like I, I, I want to have a rap stuff. battle yeah, yeah I, I want all of it yeah like it's just going to be fucking fantastic television I think um, and yeah you know love Kurt I wish he could have gone out the way he wanted to Kurt an or that they would have done something sufficient with um, Baron to make it worthwhile but it wasn't so yeah this this is the match that we, we need to get which takes us to the co-main event of night two Anthony a heel Bianca Belair taking on a baby face Liv Morgan for it to finally prove she belongs damn it I think she's proved it well she has but she's not there now is she they dropped her the fans turned on her a little bit and she's nowhere near the fucking main seat she, is she even going to be on Wrestlemania this year I hope so I feel like she, Royal, Royal Rumble proved that but, she could hang but where is she she got she got dumped out pretty early in the elimination chamber and as it stands now how is she ever going to make it onto Wrestlemania card I mean, I'll take your point but so I, I, I gotta hope they treat her with some respect. She, well, they do. She, they will at WrestleMania forty. Okay. Because this is going to be the year of Liv's redemption, where she's like, do you know what? I was a world champion once, and I'm going to get back there. Bianca is stale, man, and it's no, you know, I don't mean any offense by this. She's phenomenal. She's gifted. She's an athlete. She's she boring. Needs, she needs to heal too. Yeah. Um. It's it's so tired now. The EST of who gives a fuck, right? So, <laughs> right. This is what we need to get. We need to heal Bianca, who's, you know, can back it up that she's the best and, you know, can really kind of taunt Liv to say, you got no chance. How can you beat me and all that kind of stuff? Be amazing. Liv does it. She proves it. Yeah. Great stuff. And the Which heel means... works kind of there, isn't it? Because Bianca, like, she's come in and she got further than Liv has on the main roster a lot faster. Mm-hmm. So she can be an arrogant ass about that. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You know, it, it like works. It. it works. Um, which leads us to the main event of WrestleMania 40, night two. Because it hasn't happened this year. It's If it doesn't happen next, it ain't happening. Yeah, I mean, I was shocked that they haven't sorted something for this year. It's a Hollywood down to the fact that like, even, the young, even Young Rock referenced it. Yeah. Like, that match has to which be Which is why I think it's not happened this year, so it's got to happen. Yeah. The Rock said it's happening, right? So it's got to be next year. Yeah. It has to be because if he doesn't do it, like it literally won't happen then. And then it's just in the in the young rock and all the storyline, everything's there for no reason, mm. right? So you'll notice the titles have been split up again. Yep. So in night one, um, Cody was challenging for the WWE title, um, as opposed to both, and then Roman's got the Universal title back. Have you decided how they're being split up, Jordan? No. Oh. To be honest, though, I think, um, I think you can't have the likes of an Adam Pearce or something coming up to Roman Reigns and saying, oh, we're going to split the titles up. But I think for Cody, it seems less of it. You know what I mean? Like, Cody's not going to lose his shit and all that. He's like a, okay. You know what I mean? Like, for whatever reason. So it might just be, they do a draft and say, you know what, we've got this show. Um, Cody, you've been drafted to Raw, SmackDown, wherever he ends up. We need a ch- we need a championship on this one. So we're going to merge them. You'll hold that and we're going to bring this in or whatever. So <clears throat> it would be kind of like they did with the Original undisputed title. Yeah, sort of. You go, well, we've got that, but we're going to bring uh, Big Gold back. Yeah. And then you have two titles again. And then yeah. you merge them slowly. Well, exactly. Yeah. It's it's all a bit mental. But I feel like whenever you do this and you have the champ, you know, the, the, 
basically, because it is merged just with two two separate titles. So they need to just basically go, look, we're calling this the WWE Championship. The Universal title will be kind of retired and started again. Co- Cody might do this. Cody might be the one who gets rid of the two belts, brings back the winged eagle, and we've got one championship. There you go. And then we just introduce another belt. I mean, the story there writes itself, doesn't it? It's like he's, he had the picture on his mantle, and it was like, you know what, but the title my dad wanted wasn't these two. It was this. And, you know, he's got a history of, you know, unveiling the old... I, I think they've already given a nod for that title to yeah. come back when he wins. Yeah, there's got to be something, you know what I mean, to it. Which, it'd be fascinating because... Even it is he was just... on Stone Cold's podcast the other week and mentioned it again. Yeah. It's weird, though, because the WWE... That's why they'll need to still have a massive WWE logo, because it's a branding thing, isn't it? But, yeah. you know, so I don't, I'm not too it's, sure how... Do you know but... what? It's Cody. He probably said, look, you can bring the winged eagle back, but you need a WWE logo right there on the other side <laughs> of your neck. And I'll like, do it. Totally. Yeah. Um... So I don't know. I think if we don't, we haven't got it this year, so we have to get it next year. So I want to see it. It's a shame because obviously it'll it would have been perfect to do it now, but I don't think the bloodline story is going away. Even if he loses the titles, he's still the bloodline. Yeah, and it's still all about the bloodline. So um, I don't like it. So yeah, that was me mania. That's a pretty decent mania. Some wild choices in there, but pretty, mm. pretty decent many. And like, you know, I, und- I don't know, you didn't book it, you're in a vested. <laughs> so I understand the whole JY thing might not happen. I understand the whole elite thing is, you know, potentially not going to happen. But while these, or while all these contracts are up and there's no clear indication they're going to resign with AEW, mm. I do think whether you believe them or not, Triple H would love to put AEW out of business. And so, if he has the opportunity to sign the likes of Kenny and oh, stuff, without a doubt, he'd go like, for I don't it. doubt that one little bit. So, like, it, as much as they're a pissant company that he doesn't <laughs> care about, and I don't think AEW would go under. By the way, like I know you think that would kind of be the end of them. I do think I they've think got enough for, for all of their founding members. Because mm. correct me if I'm wrong, Jericho was there, but he wasn't. Well, he was in the EDP. No, I don't think so. It was just them four, wasn't it? Mm. For all of them to have left. That's pretty damaging. But it's a different company now, though. That's like, pretty damaging. They've, they've only been EVPs by title for ages. Not, it's pretty damaging. <laughs> you can't just keep saying the same thing. I can't, I can't Tony Khan runs that company. He books that company. does everything with that company. Pretty damaging. And I think that's probably one of the reasons they'll leave. Because it ain't I mean, what they signed up for. We could see Tony Khan's WWE by this point, and then all Never these happen. matches will happen. Never happen. Why not? Just won't. If Daddy lets him buy it, I'm sure he'd be fine. I, I, think it's, I mean, his it's Daddy's rich, but I don't think he's going to let him spend $9 billion. That's a step too it's far. profitable. Probably. Come on. I don't Come know. on. So, yeah. Um, that was I my WrestleMania 40. I don't 40. know anyone would spend $9 billion on the company. Well, honest. exactly. Who would? Uh, so, yeah. Let us know in the comments. What did you think? Which matches did you enjoy? Which matches do you think are out of my fucking mind? Which ones might happen? Which ones definitely won't? Um, let us know. This is meant to be, you know, a discussion, if you will. So, give us your feedback. Um, and if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you do that in the comment section. Hit subscribe. Give us a like. All that good stuff. Um, and if you are watching us on YouTube but have never checked out Pro Wrestling TV, do it. Do it. Check them out. <laughs> um, give them a shot. I think they've got loads of stuff, haven't they? What have they got they've on tons there? Tons of stuff on there. Mate. They've got the Women's Wrestling Army. They've got MLW, AAA, New South Pro Wrestling. A whole bevy of different wrestling shows. On top of that, you have wrestling talk shows like the wonderful A to the K wrestling show. Well, you, you have, have the likes of What Culture Pro Wrestling. You have the likes of... Alicia Ratoot. Alicia Ratoot. Uh, Chop Sports. You have all sorts going on in the talk show elements of it. I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again, Carl. They also have some documentary style stuff. Say the Mania. Say the Mania. Friendship to Friendship. again. A mm-hmm. fantastic one if you've never seen it. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, hopefully more to come as well because we, we keep seeing regular content being added onto there and it's all... If you're a wrestling fan, there's something there for you. It's a fantastic app. Indeed. Indeed. Um, and you may have seen us sampling some of the latest creations from Top Rope um, where you can get yourself 10% off at topropebrewing.com. So head over there, check them out. Um, Buy it. And save some it. money. Buy it, drink it, love it. Like, um, and get yourself some teas not Beatles not Star Wars but ours and you can get them for Pro Wrestling Tees uh, including our latest designs from Alt Wrestling Tees who you can find on Instagram yeah <laughs> alright LA Knight Jesus um, so yeah well, that is us for another week um, as we said this is probably going to go out after WrestleMania 39, so maybe all of the yeah, things we said here. When you watch relevant. it yeah, bear in mind we haven't seen 39 at this point. Yes so uh you know, cut some slack with you. But yeah, until next time, we will say bye.